Number one. I once responded to an emergency call on base. The elevator was broken, so I had to run up eight flights of stairs, and my bulletproof vest constricted my breathing a bit, so by the time I got to the door, I was very out of breath. The call was a vague medical emergency, where the RP was crying and kept saying they needed an ambulance. The dispatcher had called ahead, and the barracks manager was waiting with a key. We opened the door to find a young seaman with his pants and underwear around his ankles, surrounded by pornography and lube on the floor. He was just standing there on his tiptoes, tears running down his face and softly moaning. I walked over to him, only to realize that the doorknob to his bathroom was up his ass and still attached to the door. Dumbfounded, I looked at him, and he said, I backed up into it by accident. Being already out of breath, I had to sit down as the laughter began. When EMS arrived, they couldn't believe it either. They ended up cutting the door around the knob and transporting him, with the knob still up his ass. As it was, they had to take him down eight flights of stairs. With each bump down the steps, the knob would move and he would yelp. By the fifth floor, it wasn't funny anymore. Number two. I arrive and find myself having a hard time breathing due to the smell of crap. I see the patient who seems to be high as balls. We stand her up and her pants are clearly full of shit. We walk her to the ambulance and I begin to start an IV on her. I grab her arm to find a vein and as usual, I place it in my lap. The paramedic shouts at me to wait then throws a sheet in my lap. She had shit all over her hands and arms that I hadn't spotted earlier. She had been playing in the shit. Then I saw her smile. Please don't do meth. Otherwise, just about every combination of blood, piss, shit, vomit, and removed body parts you can imagine. Number 3 I was on a junior firefighter program when I was 15 in my small town. I'm talking really small town, like 400 people. One night, a guy was heading home drunk in his pickup truck. He flipped his truck and wasn't wearing his seatbelt. While the truck was in the air, he managed to hang halfway out his side window. The truck landed on its side and slid for about 100 feet, so there was body and car parts everywhere. Being a small town in the middle of BFE, there is no cleanup crew. Who did he call to clean up? The fire department. I'm walking around at night with a flashlight, rubber gloves, and a bag, picking up pieces of this drunk guy. Number four. My husband is a police officer. He came home silent one night and eventually in tears. There was a call from dispatch saying a five-year-old had called, saying her baby brother wasn't breathing. Ambulance came, as well as police officers and CPS for possible child abuse. The scene was horrible. Only the mother was home and she was passed out, surrounded by booze and was obviously a hoarder. Garbage and trash everywhere. Random shit that was not child safe. It smelled like feces and decaying rodents. The child was found in her bedroom closet and smelled like piss and looked as if she hadn't been showered or fed in days. The infant, about three months old, was barely breathing and was just wearing a severely soiled diaper. The closet was full of bottles of curdled milk. It turns out her sister had been trying her best to take care of him under the circumstances. Both children are alive and thriving today, taken by CPS 
and we're not separated. Number five. When I worked for a hospital where the criminal autopsies were performed, myself and another guy had to transfer an unidentified body from one body bag to a new one. The state had the person listed as an open case with no identity. His head and hands had been removed. That is why he was in our morgue for over three years. Even in a chilled environment, tissues decompose, just slower. So the reason we had to transfer him was because he was leaking. We proceeded to pour the liquefied contents from bag A to bag B, then scoop out the bones and hair and other slop, as all of it was still part of an open investigation. Number six. So I'll preface this by saying that it had been a very long shift. We had been running calls all day long, literally back and forth without any chance for lunch or dinner. Around 8 p.m., we were on our way back from the hospital, back to the firehouse, and just flat refused to put ourselves back in service until we stopped at Sonic and grabbed food, which we did. We get back to the firehouse and grab the food, step halfway out of the ambulance, extremely excited to eat. Then the pager goes off again. It's a request from the police to help them pick up a rather obese gentleman. Whatevs. It's just a pickup. We can put him in his bed and be back at the station in 20 minutes. So we close the door and just take off without even getting out. The sweet aroma of so many tater tots and a sweet, juicy double bacon cheeseburger filled the cab. It was just about to send me into an epileptic apoplexy when we got to the guy's house. I called us on scene and we got out of the ambulance. This particular shift was myself and my usual partner, as well as a volunteer who was hanging out with us that day. I'm not a big guy by any means, but my partner was rather built. The volunteer was just a young girl. Anyways, onto the story. We walk in and I'm immediately overpowered by the smell of so much shit. Like I expected it to be smeared all over the walls. It smelled so bad. We were just through the garage door in the living room though, and so we didn't see anyone. I said, fire department, really loud. And the cops shouted back for us to come down the hallway. I turned around the corner and saw the two cops. One had just the biggest shit eating grin you ever saw, and the other was half vomiting in his mouth. Then I hear a voice say, hey guys. It was rather cheery and so I looked down towards the source to see the patient's head sticking out of the door. Fair enough. As we went down the hallway, the smell became rather unbearable, but still no sign of sh- Nope. Found it. He was on the floor in the bathroom. Now try to picture this. A roughly 600 pound, butt naked man, lying face up in about two and a half inches of a sea of liquid shit. It covered the whole bathroom floor. Well, so much for the easy way out. My partner and I have had it with calls and just want to go. I look at him and he says, screw it, let's just haul him up. He gets down, grabs a guy under his arms and tries to pick him up. He succeeds in trying too hard for nothing and smearing poop all over his shirt and pants. He sort of muttered something to himself, then said, I'll get the backboard, I'll be right back. The volunteer said, I'll do the paperwork, he 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 he, and disappeared. I noticed it was taking my partner a while to come back, so I peeked out the front window in the living room, and sure enough, he's vomiting all over the side of the ambulance, then grabs the backboard and walks back in. Now, in order to lift someone up with a backboard, you have to slide it under them, then balance them as they are stood up. My partner being the burliest, He's going to be standing behind the guy to push up. That means I get to wade into the brown sea and make sure he doesn't fall forward. Screw it. That's why they give us boots. But wait. As we start to ratchet him up, inch by inch, that's when I realize. This is a 600 pound man who couldn't stand up. 
What if he falls forward? I am not big enough to hold him straight. He will fall right on top of me. And I will die, smothered by a smelly 600 pound man, and drowning in his liquid shit. The fear rises with every inch we bring him higher, until finally, he is standing upright. We walk him back, and as we get to the door, I can see that maybe, just maybe, God is going to spare me from my shittastic fate. Then we hear a voice from beyond the distance. No. The caretaker had finally appeared from whatever corner of the house he was hiding in. We weren't allowed to bring him out of the bathroom until he had put down towels, presumably to spare the carpet from poop. The fear begins to rise once more. I'm still wading through the brown sea, and a metric ton of death is starting to wobble. He tosses down some towels, grabs a walker, and we finally get him out of the bathroom. I kneel down to make sure the walker legs are stable, and my partner rests the guy on the walker. Mission success. Then I look up. I lock eyes with this man, and he moans, Ah, oh, I'm gonna go again. And I look down to see Niagara Falls flowing down his leg. It splashes all over the towels. The caretaker moves in right away to start wiping off his leg. And finally, karma strikes back. The last spurt of poo erupts from McPoopy's anus and onto the caretaker's face. Make me stand in the shit. Ha 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 ha. Anyways, we get the guy back to his bed, lay him down, and sign him off. He really doesn't want to go to the hospital, even though really he should. And don't get me wrong, hungry or not, we would gladly take him. We get back in the ambulance. At this point, I'm pretty much covered in shit. My partner is doubly covered in shit. The volunteer is shit free, but fuck her. She has to smell all that shit. We stopped at my partner's house on the way back so we could grab another uniform. I had one still at the firehouse. While he was out, I remembered how hungry I was. I looked down at the bag of Sonic. I looked away. I looked again. I looked away. Got covered in shit. Ate my Sonic covered in shit. Because fuck you. I'm hungry.